You're listening to Rad Rolls, a Fallout tabletop podcast. Let's go! All right. Uh, yes. So you all, you all go to the Enchanter's tent and you enter. Um, much like the uh, the pyro tent that you were in, same kind of like circular setup with the benches, but uh, the ring is actually laid out in like a red velvet carpet. Um, it, it seems like for the most part, everything is um, is kind of like. Uh, put away except for a single chair that sits in the middle Uh, and from the ceiling there's like draped moon and stars um they're kind of like these like fog machines are kind of like fogging up the place a little (laughs) bit um um you see in this chair that a robed person with a wide-brimmed pointy hat is is sitting in it um and they are actually eating out of a um kind of a, a bag of of sugar bombs um, they're trying to just like shove them in their mouth. Um, they eye that you're enter and they take it and they chuck it um, in the corner and um, they sit uh, more astutely up. Uh, but you realize in this big chair, this is a very, very small person um, that is covering their face with the wide brim hat. And um, you hear them say, approach me. Uh, okay. Hey. Uh, Table approaches. Do you have questions from the Flynnwig, the Enchanter? Oh, boy. It's all you, man. Wow. Um, yes. What, what's up here? What's your thing? I mean, <laughs> there's... I mean, we got a lot of up dog. What's up, dog? Oh, uh, uh, the, the the person starts like cackling over, laughing hilariously, like in this really high pitched laugh. Uh, and they and they realize what they're doing. They come up more astutely. I'll do magic for a juice box if you got one. Let me peruse my inventory here real quick. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um well I got the noodle cup, which is basically just chicken juice, right? With noodles. Probably That's not the juice box he wants. Interesting way to look at it. Um the broth is the juice of the meat. Do you say that? I don't. Long? I don't really, really like noodle cups. But if you can sing me a song about noodles, that would be nice too. Hazel, aren't you the theater person? I well, <laughs> theater is putting it generously. It was kind of a okay. All right. Noodles, noodles in your cup. Noodles of noodles for you to sup. Eat your noodles, get big and strong. Noodles, noodles all day long. Uh, do Eat a your noodles. Plus, with- <laughs> do a speech plus charisma for like a difficulty too. I don't know. Well, I think that I think that is is worthy of a difficulty. That was real good. Okay, let's see here. Did it roll? Uh, yeah, I got uh, one success. Yeah, with that, I'll give it to you because I enjoyed that song so much. Um, the the the, uh, the robed pointy hat figure uh, claps excitedly at the sound of the song and says, "Wow, you guys are really talented." Um, hey, can you help me out finding uh, my friend? can try and help you maybe find your friend maybe can you tell us about your friend yeah uh his name is flynnwig i mean his his name is flynn 
apple juice, the enchant apple juice. And um, he went up to Big Mountain and uh, he told me to stay here and uh, fill in for, I mean, be a be a friend on a chair and do big magic for folk because I'm filling with the enchanter. And he went to the big pink mountain and he hasn't come back yet. I'm a little worried. Okay. Um, right. Uh, definitely getting the vibe of what's up here. Um, can you tell us what your friend, not Flynn the Enchanter, looks like? Yeah, he's... Uh, he wears a big cape. He has a top hat. He has... Um, one of his eyeballs is just white, and the other one's just black. And uh, he he has he has a big cane with a big skull on top of it, um, okay. and he does really fancy magic. It's really cool. And he went to the big pink rock mountain. That yeah, he went up there, and uh, that was uh, a day ago. And um, okay. and uh, I'm um, pretty thirsty. Does he do real magic? I'm yes yeah he does he does the wheelest magic I've ever seen in my entire life mm -hmm. yeah okay so we don't have a juice box if you're thirsty can I just give you a little bit of water and then we'll your yeah yeah I yeah yeah I, I like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay uh, I'm just gonna give him I think I have one five water I'm gonna give him a five He's obviously yeah. a, just a little guy. Just he slaps a it. sippy cup lid on it. He takes Basically, it, takes a, yeah. takes a swig, um, takes a swig of the water, and um, kind of like uh, tucks it in, in the crack in the chair and just like, you know, is holding it there. And um, he, he, he looks at you all and says, uh, all right, uh, you guys, I could do some magic if you want to see it. Uh, sure. We he lifts his le he lifts his uh, arm up and his sleeve like kind of dangles out, and uh, a red laser shoots out from under his sleeve. He says, "Right there, that was that was an American Deathway." Very cool. Yeah, yeah, the American Deathway really cool. Mm -hmm. Did the laser hit anything? No, no, no. Thankfully. Actually, it probably went through the, <laughs> like the the top of the tin. Just, you know, like there's like a little yeah. hole. Like, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, popped off a warning shot, and <laughs> well, he's at it again. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, I think I think we've heard enough. We can go. We'll go check on your friend. We'll go see yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, and if he uh, uh, if he wants to. If he's looking for new family members, you could always join, and then we could be friends too. Okay. Um, yeah. Are you gonna be okay here by yourself? Well. Yeah, I'm Flynnwig the Enchanter. I'm the most powerful mage in the world. Awesome, awesome. That is truly <sighs> awesome. Okay. Miss Greenglass, uh did you not see the American Death Ray? Yes, I did in fact see the American um, Death Ray, and uh, it was very impressive until it rains. Um, we we're gonna we'll, we'll be right back. Don't don't forget to drink the rest of your water uh, before you uh, you should take a nap at some point in the next couple hours too. You look a little tired. All right, sounds good. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. All right, y'all. That was maybe a bit of a bust so far. I think it's got potential. Okay, ah. I'm not ruling out that there's not potential there because the way he described the actual Flynn the Enchanter with the one white eye, one black eye, skull cane thing, I'm kind of fucking with that. Uh, so we, but we, honestly, we talked with like a nine year old with a laser weapon hidden under his arm who wants us to go find his dad. Um, it may or may not work out to our advantage. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, I, I agree. It kind of feels like a bust right now, but it does feel a lot better than punching assholes to me. 
All right, when you put it that way, Frankie. All right, we've got we've got a clear hierarchy now. Uh, can we please go see the the Lord of Power or the Ring of the Lords? Well, that guy we, is. so we just we did just promise to go check at the mountain to see if we can find. We're the not enchanter. saying the other we're tent is right we, over there. We won't. And we're the, not saying we, we go won't to the big go rock candy mountain the, later. The, the big rock candy mountain is like right there, guys. Look, like there's look, everything's right, right here. We're just. Hazel, we're just getting our options together. I I still kind of want to try out the Flynn the Enchanter, like the real one. I still think maybe there's some potential, like I said. But, you know, after... There might be apple juice later. We're not saying we won't do it. I'm I'm still... I'm still pro Flynn the Enchanter. I'm a lot less pro pro Flynn the Enchanter that I was five minutes ago, though. Also, you know... But it still seems like better than Flamin' Hot where we may have to incinerate our head and one of us may have to punch assholes in perpetuity. Uh, Guys, it was a cute kid. Like, that seems like a nice kid. Happens. If we have to hang out with this kid, that doesn't seem like the end of the world. Like, you know, the kid was kind of funny. Honestly, Honestly, I, I I like the kid. Um, I'm not looking forward to the day he has to get a uh, punchy uh, an I'm guessing necklace put on and have to go through a gauntlet of hell that we're about to go through. Punchy, I'm guessing that outside of when you yourself were a child, you've really never interacted with kids at all. <laughs> Listen, you're right. I don't like kids, but you know. <laughs> That's. I think that's beside the point. Like, did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy tying that kid? Yes. What a goddamn yes. juice box. He's sitting there. We should have taken his goddamn sugar bombs. Uh. You know. You know, because Abel, he's never had them. That kid is just gobbling them up. Yeah, with but little, that kid, pork, he a little piglet over there. Listen, he was getting them. more enjoyment out of them. Anyway, really, you all had hyped up sugar bombs, and it really just looked like. Like right. animal pellets. Type I can probably deal. break it down, down to you. It's you very un-American to steal candy from children. Now, I, 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 I will counter with there is nothing more American than taking something that doesn't belong to you. <sighs> well, it remains to be seen by whoever judge people are when they finally show up, which I'm not mm. looking to. All right, so... All right, show of hands. Are we going to go to the Big Rock Candy Mountain? Or are we going to the Ring? I say the we Ring Lord place. Weigh our options because maybe the Ring Lord would be like, "Hey, y'all seem cool. You don't have you literally to literally have to walk by the Ring Tent to get to the Candy Mountain." All right, all right, he's we'll right go there. To- you know what? We'll go to the ring tent and uh, see what's up with the ring tent. I'm I'm hoping it's like a little more relatable to stuff I've come in contact with. So we'll see. Oh, if you're if you're more worried, relatable than uh, things yeah. I'm going to have to come in contact with. We're not talking about punching flaming assholes right now. We're talking about, like knife juggling or dancing or something. I don't know. Oh, I, well, I I could well, leave yeah. Toto or Kansas City Dick with the kid to keep him company. Please don't. I mean, please don't. If we come back, wow. the kid's gonna be dead. Wow. Toto's a good boy. Out of name, I forgot his name was Kansas Toto's beside you. Go. Yeah, he's so excitable. <laughs> So now, now I'm understanding Toto's that it like wasn't. Toto's like chewing on the leg of Kansas City Dick. <laughs> now I'm I... guessing you were also the uncle that they didn't let watch babysit the kids because that they were worried they'd come home exactly to like broken arms kids, yeah. and yeah, yeah, fires yeah. happening in the toilet. You don't know, somehow. you don't know anything about yeah. my family. You don't know. You did don't you ever... know. All right, did you ever bring M80s to a Fourth of July celebration? It was all cherry bombs and bottle rockets all the live long day. We put yeah, the bottle rockets in the bottles and we'd, we'd stand on top of the building and we'd shoot them down at kids on the street. Uh, They're like, hey, heads up! And we'd shoot the bottle rockets at them. And if those kids weren't, weren't uh, fast, 
bar rock around the eye. Yeah, sometimes I'm really not surprised that my uh, neighborhood uh, full of eye patches happened. Yeah, should have opened up a store. Amazing. Punchy's eye patches, kid sizes only. <laughs> Punchy's wow. pediatric eye patch. <laughs> now with a free box. You know? Abel, Pretty what about you? Did they let uh, <laughs> did they let let kids into your cult? I mean, your. I mean, your they cult? were usually born into them, and we don't use the c word. We've talked about this. We don't use the c word. Hmm. I mean, you're right, so are you the ring tent? Yeah, you go to the ring the ring tent. Um, yeah, let's go to the Ringu tent. You all you all enter the the ring tent. Um, same similar setup on the outside, but in the center, there's actually a lot more people that are kind of um, building up this like a kind of massive stage. You see uh, three kind of different types, and I'll describe these types to you of people that are there. There are um, these uh, guys that are kind of like in like striped shirts that have the sleeves ripped off them and they're kind of muscular and their pants are ripped um their shaved heads like kind of like are they're bald right on top but they have long tufts of hair that stick out uh, their faces are painted white and they have a red nose and their hair is uh, dyed blue and these long tufts that come out uh there's another group of of people that um uh, essentially have like tin swords uh s- attached to their back and one is is down each of their throats and they're actually walking around with their heads up um, with these swords kind of down their throats, looking around and moving things. Uh, and the last group of people you see are a bunch of super mutants uh, that that uh, have like a, the the harness on with everything. And um, and but instead of uh, hands, they actually have uh, wooden mallets, giant wooden mallets for hands. Uh, um, and they are all collectively uh, working on building a, a, a large stage, this kind of octagonal stage in the middle of the ring. Okay, this is both kind of relatable and totally bonkers. What the hell? Um, all right. Uh, so we got like a three ring circus thing going on here, more or less. Punchy, this one's this one's yours. Uh, oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. You, yep. you wanted to go in, so uh, let's go in. You okay, heard. so does it look like there's anyone directing all this activity, and uh, do they react to us when we come in? No, you pretty much have uh, nobody's really reacting to you when you come in, but you pretty much have those three options of of people to speak to. There's like, there's not a particular person, but you can go speak to them, and they're gonna have a. It's just what flavor? There's three flavors. Which flavor of of folk do you wanna? Clowns, super mutants, or sword swallowers? Pretty much, raider clowns. Well, Oh God! I'll go, I'll go to the nearest clown. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. You you approach the clown. He's kind of working diligently on building the stage. Uh, hey, uh, hey, buddy. Uh, who who's your boss? Who's the foreman on this job? Oh, hi. Are you guys here to look for uh? You looking for the ringleader? Yes. That's who oh, we're looking for. Oh, yeah, 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 I really like him. Hey, uh, we're almost done with the stage, but, um, yeah, I can get you a meeting. We can all set up. Uh, and he kind of, like, uh, wipes your little brain canister, kind of wipes it with his hand. Oh, what's your name, buddy? Punchy. Punchy. We're going we're gonna to need a better name than Punchy. Think of a more exciting name. A more exciting name than Punchy. Yeah, yeah. Literally the most little... dynamic name you can imagine. What's your name, yeah. clown? Oh, my name is Lars Skipperton. Lars Skipperton? <laughs> yeah. You're... All right, well, my name is Punchy Bohoon. It describes what I'm going to do to you if you don't take me to your boss. Uh, do a speech plus charisma for a difficulty one, I would say. Let's do this. Would you like to use an AP? We currently have seven. Mm-hmm. No. You might want to. 
No. No, I was supposed to just go for it. Are you just going to let it rock? Okay. Chris in speech, correct? Yeah. Let's, let's do it. We're going in raw. We're going in raw. Uh, zero successes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're not this is going in. Just made. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, I'll just uh, have to tell you what. I'll announce you. You get in the ring, and when you're in the ring, uh, we'll announce you, and then um, and then he's gonna he's gonna come out and talk to you. All right. All right. That this sounds completely legit and not concerning at all. I'm on board with this plan. All right. He starts to he like reaches his arms around you, trying to get you up onto the ring. The ring is like probably I would say like five feet, like the the, the ladder up there. How are you gonna get up there as a robot? <laughs> Um. Oh, can't, okay, so there's just a ladder. Um, no, it's not a ladder. It's like a stage. Like it, it, there's, it's just like he's l- trying to lift you five feet to the air. Oh. So you have enough. You have the assisted strength of Lars Skipperton, the clown raider. Um, <coughs> but but you're also a heavy robo brain. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> trader. All right, you you got to get my treads on first. If you get you get my my treads on, like the lip of the stage, I can I can get myself the rest of the way. You just got you got to li- put the bottom up, kind of tip me back, and you got just kind of lift a little. Just you got to like put me on the lip, and I I can take care of the rest. All right. So with that explanation, I'm actually going to have you do a charisma plus your payroll for difficulty two. So I feel like you're you're explaining to him how how to get you up there mechanically one success okay well with the difficulty too i'll tell you what um he actually tosses you up there um and you managed to get on the stage but you're prone um and you're prone for this next part um you hear the uh, an announcer come on and says, Welcome to tonight's main event in this corner. The contender, Punchy Buffoon. It's not my name. That is not my name. And now, <laughs> and you hear the music start to play here. Bow, wow. Oh. And from uh, the ceiling uh, comes a man uh, with uh, essentially a, a stage that is lowering. Uh, this man is gilded in a huge cloak, and this man is so <coughs> muscular. He almost has like a greenish hue to him. Like you would think he's a super mutant from far away, but he's he's really not. He's got a head full of hair and a and a giant beard. He's got a he's kind of got like almost like a napkin wrapped around his head. And he's got these giant goggles on his face. He's got two tires that kind of like sit upon his 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 shoulders as like almost like pauldrons for his tank top that he has on um he's descending into the ring and he grabs uh from his pocket a microphone and uh as he's descending he gets out and points at the prone punchy buffoon he says now you tell me who this freaking buffoon is coming into my ring it's Bohun. The name's Bohun. I clearly said Bohun. I don't know where he's, where that guy got got where that guy got my name wrong. My name is Punchy Bohun. Not, yeah, not but Bohun. everyone oh, sees that your punchin's a real buffoon because they don't know what a real punch looks like. It's one of my sackums that I'm gonna bring up and put it right. In- when you're least expecting it. You know what? You don't even have the comeuppance to challenge me, the ring lord himself, the man of the hour, the top of the cream. Uh, yeah, if you, um, you know, I'm from, from my vantage point, you look like a very tall man and a very large man, I must say. A very muscular, large man. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm here. You know, I, this is you know, um, I I I you know, I'm lying down. That's how unimpressed I am with you. Yeah, that's it. I'm just lying down here because I'm unimpressed by you, Mister Ring Lord. Actually, I'm <clears throat> I'm Lord of the Ring. And this is my ring you've stepped into. So listen to me. You don't have the gumption to even. Come close to this. Now, 
I can tell you how you can rise to the top, how you can get all the way up there, but it's gonna take work. It's gonna take the putchka that I'm gonna put into you, and we're gonna do it. Oh, yeah, teach me your ways, Lord of the Ring. I so if you even want a learn. shot, if you want a shot at my ring, if you want to wield my one ring, be the lord of this ring, then I tell you what, you can be one of my servants, serving me for the rest of your life. Now, what you need to do, you see all of my, my massive fan base. I've got hammer hands, I've got sword swallowers, I've got... Clown mouse. I got them all. But the one thing I don't have are wheelie foots. Wheelie foots. Less weird than yeah, wheelie foot. They got little wheels attached to their hands and they and they roll around. They roll around a big circle and they want to bite each other's faces off. And that's what you want. You want? Yeah, I want them. I want them in my fan base. I want to feel them, feel them supporting the big man, the Lord of the Ring. Punchy, Punchy, we can move him down the hierarchy any moment you want to. Ah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, we should have gone to that goddamn mountain. <laughs> should have gone to that mountain. Too late. Uh, okay, okay, Mister Lord of the Ring. Uh, we'll find you some wheelie hands. Uh, right away. Right, guys? Yeah. Wheelie hands? We'll be on the lookout for them. What you're going to need to do is go to the battle zone. And at the battle zone, they're going to be there. They're going to be racing around. They're going to be putting their dirty hands all over pieces of my prosperity. And what you're going to do is you're going to tell them that the ring lord sent you and you want them dead. But really, I want them to join me. It's kind of oh. like a roller derby type situation, bro. Like oh yeah, they're like uh, tough tough people on eight wheels. We can do it. Yeah, we uh, we got it. Ring Lord, Lord Ring, Lord of the Ring, <coughs> Ring Lord, Ringy Low Lord Man. We got it. You see these we, rings we, we, on we my fingers? Though. And he pulls out he pulls out his hands, and they're covered in these in these giant rings. See these? These are for each of my enemies. I've slaughtered in the ring over the years. And this one right here, this one right here, this could be you. If you don't do this for me. Okay. Yes. Yes. I am on board. We got Great. it. Yeah. We gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You understand the power of the ringmaster general right here. Yeah. Run scared. Run scared. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right away, sir. Get me off of this thing, guys. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll clamber over and try to. Finagle. Punchy just like reaches out one of his little spilly robo arms. Just drag me down. Just, uh, just yeah, as they're dragging I'll you down, they're playing. You. They're playing this guy's music again. He is re- reascending into the rafters. Oh, okay, so he's the most normal of the three. Did they say this does not vote well? I've known a lot of ringmasters, and that guy is. Um, we should just go. We, should we haven't met. We haven't even met Flaming Hot yet. Just the subordinates, and you know, guys. If if I just get a glove, I'm okay. I'm okay. I just get me a glove, and we'll get this figured out. All right. Look, well, I feel like we should at least rescue the kid's caretaker, regardless. Hazel did make a good point with that. We did kind of promise the kid. Honestly, yeah. I still okay. think it's the best option Maybe. out of the three that we've explored so far. Yes, Maybe it's the best rest- option. I'm I, I'm a man. I can admit it. Go to the mountain. Maybe Although if it we seems rescue like him, he'll kind of, always be solid. Anyway, you do kind of seem... You brought it up a few times now. If you want to go do the flaming hot thing, like we're not going to stop you. No, it, if that's it's really just, what you want to do. It really... You know, it, it seemed like the worst option... Until we started revealing all the cards. Isn't it amazing think, that every option we've run across has been the worst option is so far? Like right from the get. Let's help. No one kid. said it would be easy. like at the very least, like it is God going to strike us down if we help a kid? 
No, and I feel like I the feel worst like thing. If, if like the, the judge was peeking the around the corner thing, right now, if the judge was peeking around the corner right now, would he blow us up if we were helping a kid? Or if I'm over here throwing right hooks at anuses? Honestly, given the options, helping the kid probably probably has the greatest chance of us getting killed. Just guessing. Possibly. But about this community time, so far. Honestly, you know, if helping I, a kid gets me killed. Yeah, I feel like we should help the kid even if he gets us. Right? I've, right? I've, and I've, I've looked like, up a lot of bad karma recently. I think maybe I need to help a kid. I think I need to help a kid. And then maybe I can punch an asshole as a treat. (laughs) After. Like, like without without any, you know, like, strings attached, right? Just like a, just a, a, let's go help a kid. I mean. Yeah. You know, I, I will mention, you know, we... Remember that time we did save most of those orphans from that cave? I mean, helping kids is kind of something that we we do. Yeah, it feels like the least we can do to help balance out scales of uh, uh, apparently uh, killing a uh, 18-year-old who was working on uh, his coming of age. Uh, now, officially, he had reached adulthood. He he did, and he really was no. He was okay with letting people die. And I don't know. Okay, I'm I'm dealing with some weird unresolved guilt I didn't exactly have before. So we're just going to And you know what'll help uh, that? Helping help this kid. kid. Yeah, okay, let's go. All right. Uh so you are going to the uh the the, the pink mountain that I have in this map. Um you come to it, um, and there is kind of this giant uh, chocolate slide that kind of just like goes all the way down it. Um, it, it looks like a, almost like this like river of chocolate that's just pouring out of this mountain. It's it's such an incline; it's like a, a steep drop. You would never be able to get up it. But in front of you is an entrance door. And um, it, it has a little uh, sign above it that says, uh, the Big Rock Candy Mountain, wait time 99 minutes. Oh. Um, the, the, the entrance is a cavern-like, um, but the door is left kind of, it's like a metal ceiling door. It's kind of been opened slightly so that you could fit into it. Um, well... It is a large pink mountain with jagged rocks. It, it, it looks like a fake mountain. There's not, you know, a massive amount of candy because they don't want to spend all that money on the, um, the decor. Yeah. But you get the gist. And honestly, Is the the chocolate river real. Of... Taste it. Taste it. And find <laughs> out. Classic, classic Dave the DM move. <laughs> <laughs> you know, previous characters, maybe Frankie. <laughs> A little, little, little smarter I think sometimes. Frankie, I think Frankie knows better than to trust the brown fountain in nature. <laughs> yeah, let's go inside. Yeah, so you go inside and it's a, um, it's kind of cavernous in itself, but as you all enter behind you, the door actually closes and you hear a voice come over the intercom says, Oh, well, thank God you're here. I'm actually uh, trapped up in the control room. If you could... Uh, you could go through. You got to go all the way through the line, and once you get to the top, we'll be able to um, to rendezvous. And and there's kind of like a, a sound that cuts out, um, and then the, the sound is gone. I guess uh, we'll be there in approximately 99 minutes. Are we are we standing in like a queue line or like you're kind of in a small we... queue line? But there's a door at the end of it um, that that opens up into a larger room. Well, I don't think we should be time gated here. The person we're looking for has been gone a whole day. I don't think he's standing in line. Yeah. Yeah, he needs help. For the kids. For the kid. For the kid. So you, you all kind of like walk through this little queue line and um, get up to this larger room. Um, the door closes behind you and it's completely dark. 
Um, and then inside the lights turn on and you see in front of you a, a massive, massive bear. Um, this, this bear itself has a banjo in its lap. And you realize as the uh, you hear a whirling sound, it kicks on, and you see its paw moving back and forth along the banjo. And through the uh, intercom, you hear banjo music, and a song start to play. Come listen to a story about a man named Bumbo. He went and had a great big old tumbo down at the Rock Candy Mountain. He went, and he met a bear friend. And he had a little spend, spending time, that is, down at the big room. And the sound kind of cuts, and the uh, the bear itself kind of moves and twerks. Um, and the banjo drops from the bear, and the bear then moves its head, and its head turns upside down, and its paws come out of the sockets as electricity runs through its entire body. It leaps towards you all with its claws out and that is where we'll end the session for ah! for being attacked Blue by the creature on the saddle <laughs> <Blood> on the <laughs> ground <laughs> it, it's still better than the wheelers guys seriously who knows I don't want to be a wheeler <laughs>